Hi, Emily. I'm here with my dear roommate, Sydney, <laughs> and we're going to teach her the, the viola, and I'm going to be on violin, because that's just the instruments we have. So, the, well, the first thing we're going to talk about is posture. And, okay, she plays baritone, so she's musical, but you have to sit on the front edge of your chair, with your feet flat on the floor, okay? And I just want you to stretch out for a few seconds. Yep. Okay, so now, now that we have nice posture, we're going to open our cases and grab our instruments. Yeah, you can grab it. Okay. And we're not even going to worry about tuning right now. So, the next thing you want to grab is this weird looking thing right here. And this is called a shoulder rest. Yeah. Yeah, the violas are kind of weird. Okay, so now the way to know that you always have your shoulder rest on right is when you see that like the, the hump here will fit on your shoulder because you don't want the long part. You don't want it looking mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So uh, when you put it on your shoulder, so then the hump should correspond to the side with the chin rest. Yeah, and you can rest it in between your legs. Okay. And pop around there. And then once once it's on, you can adjust it to where where it's most comfortable for you. So, now that we have our nice posture and our all of our instrument together, we're going to put our instruments up. Okay. Okay. So go like this. Stretch out again. Uh-huh. And then guide the instrument to you so that it's sitting on your shoulder and not too high and not too low, but that you want it just at a, like 10 degrees above horizon and tilted. Yeah. So then, uh-huh, the, that's the goal, is to be able to let go. I'm going to scoot up with you. Let go and be able to just hold it there with your neck. Yay! Oh, Your hair's on it. Yeah. Okay. So then the reason we do that is so that there's no tension in your fingers or in like your, your shoulder okay. here, so that when you're holding it up and when you're bowing. And then once we start doing fingerings, then you can think about letting the weight of your hand press down instead of like putting yeah. pressure on. Okay. okay? So now we're not even going to touch the bow yet, but we're gonna learn the pizzicato bow stroke. And this is one is my favorite because it's the easiest to make a nice sound on. So when you have your instrument up, you can just hold it by the shoulder too. You don't have to put your arm all the way out. But you wanna balance your thumb on the fingerboard, which is the black, long black mm -hmm. thingy bobber. And you wanna use the fleshy part of your finger, your forefinger. And you just wanna think about pulling towards your palm. Mm -hmm. And you can even turn your finger to the side even more. Yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah, and your hand is kind of doing a baritone thing where you're going like this. You can you can even just naturally curl, yeah. And pull. Yep. Beautiful. <laughs> so, one thing you need to know about pizzicato is to never do it in this space that we call bow land because that's where the bow goes. And if you do, your, your finger oils are going to get on the string and then the, that's going to transfer to the bow and it's going to mess with the hairs. You just don't want to deal with that. So always do pizzicato on the fingerboard. And then this is the bridge and it holds like 37 pounds of pressure mm. on this little, little twiggy thing. Isn't that wild? Mm -hmm. And then these are the fine tuners, the scroll, and the tuning pegs. The tuning pegs are quite scary, so we're not even going to mess with that. <laughs> so now we're going to learn the names of the strings. And you can kind of think of the strings as like the fundamental pitches of like partials almost. So like on baritone open would be like B flat, and then that would be like G. Yeah, E, A, D, G. And then 
you can slide up and down. So they're not really partials, but like, you know what I mean? They're like categories. Yeah. Okay. And so we have a little song that goes with it, and it's called Ants. Okay? And it goes each, because I have the E string, each, each, and then you start on your highest string with ants. 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 And then digging in the dirt. 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 Going in the ground. Uh-huh, ground, ground. And then you have one extra string that I don't have, which is the C string. Uh-huh. And that we just name any any place with a C. So where do you want to go today, Sydney? Canada. That's a, yes, me too. Good. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to start, and we're just going to pluck quarter notes for each string. So wait, hold on. I lied. Tell me the names of your strings. So if I start with each... What is your highest string? A. Uh huh. And then what's next? D. Uh huh. What's e. next? Yup. C. Yeah. Perfect. Such a great learner. Okay, I'm gonna start. Ready? One, two, three. Each, 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 each and every ant, 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 digging in the dirt, dirt. Beautiful. Okay, so now we are going to learn a little song. Okay, so this is going to teach you your left hand because you already got the right hand with the pizzicato. So with the left hand, I want you to just hold up your instrument. Mm hmm. Try and let go. Yeah, you could be a little higher, but. I'm not worried about it. How do you make it higher? You can bring it, because right now it kind of looks like you're here, so maybe try pulling it back. Yeah. You can just slide it if you need to. Yeah, so it should feel, feel more comfortable. Yep. So then, when you put your arm out, uh huh, you don't want to have a flat wrist like this. You want it to be open and, cur and curved almost. Not curved, because you don't want tension that way. So just natural. And then with your pointer finger, you want to make a little tabletop, a little square, because that's the finger shape you should have when you're playing a string instrument. Yeah, and then... What string are you on? I'm on D right now. No, I'm on... Yeah. No, I'm on A right now. I'm sorry. So, first... You, we can be on D. It doesn't matter. Yeah, so then... Your second, third, and fourth fingers should correspond and be in the same kind of shape that your first finger's in so that, that you don't have flying fingers because they all need to come down at some point. Okay? And you want to have an open, open little, I don't know what area this is, but you want to have a curved thumb because that's my tendency too is that I want to straighten my thumb, but you have to curve it. And to try and release the tension there, you can tap your thumb against the neck. Yeah, and you just want it to land naturally. Because some, some pedagogues think it should be lined up with your pointer, and some think it should be like in between your second and third. But what we learned in class is that it's just wherever it's natural. So if it feels better there, you can do it. Do it there. But when we have our instruments up, our hands shouldn't be flying, our fingers shouldn't be flying. They should all be somewhat near the string. So we're actually going to start on the D string today. Which is, which one? Second. Yeah. Okay. And the finger pattern we're going to learn today is major. And so when you put your first finger down, that's going to be a whole step above D. Which is? E. Uh-huh. And then you're going to put another finger down the space in between it. And what's a whole step above E? Sure. Uh huh. And we get to shorten that to fart because it sounds like fart. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so then, so D, E, yep, F sharp. And then to get to G, you put your yeah. third finger down with no space. Because we're at F sharp. Uh huh. Because it's a half step. So we have. 
E, D, E, F sharp, G. And then we'll move on to A when it comes. But the little lick we're gonna learn now is Mary Had a Little Lamb, one of my favorites. And for that, you start on F sharp, and how many fingers do you put down? Two. Uh-huh. And is there space or no space? Between them, yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So, let's play our F sharp. I might be out of tune, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, think about tapping your thumb, making sure it's natural. Yup. And then are you, yep, okay. So we're gonna do quarter notes, and we're just gonna lift up each finger after a quarter note. So F sharp, E, D, yep. Okay, so then we're gonna go back up and putting our fingers down as we go. So start on D and go D, E, sharp. oops, sharp. Okay, let's try both of those together, ready? On quarter notes, one, two, three, F sharp. And then we're gonna lift one finger up and still have our still have our pointer finger down. And we're gonna play three quarter notes. Ready? Okay. And then put that middle finger back down and play a quarter note. And then, this is the fun part, we get to move strings, okay? And we're gonna go up, so which string do you think is next? Well, I don't have one, but for you it'd be an A. Yeah, so you should be on this string. Is that what you've been playing? I've been playing the same as you. Oh, yeah, no, 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 you're right. Okay, so, yeah, you have an A string, though. Yeah, that should be your highest. Yep. Oh, maybe I've been on the wrong string. Whoopsies. Okay, let's do all that again, and we're gonna just pop up to the A string. So start on your F sharp, and we're gonna go down, then up, and then E E E F, and then we're gonna play A two three. Ready? Start on F sharp, and one two. Ready? When you go back down, it's the same thing as before. F farb, E, D, E, farb, 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 and then D, D, farb, E, D. Okay, let's try it all at once. Start on your F sharp, tap your thumb. Shoot. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's tricky, man. It's, not, it's easy to just. Yep. Okay, ready? Got your thumb anchored, and on quarter notes, one, two, ready, play. So one thing to just remember when you're fingering up here is to not let your fingers fly because you want to put them back down and that's just more work. Okay, so now we get to pick up the bow. So see if you have a bow in your case. You should. If you don't, that's an issue. <laughs> and try not to touch the bow hairs. It's not a huge deal if you do, but just try not to. Okay, so now it should the hair should be all loosey goosey. Is yours? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see a bend in the stick. Okay, the stick is this back part, by the way. The stick, and then this is the frog, and this is the tip, and then the hairs. So all you do is turn this little knob down by the frog clockwise to tighten it up, and you want to tighten it to where you have a pinky's width between the hair and the stick. And an issue with this is that when you say, T okay, tighten your bows, some people will chit-chat and tighten their bows, and then they get distracted. 
and their bow hairs will snap. You good? I do a little more. Okay. I think yours looks good. Mm hmm. Lovely. So now, an important part of the bow is to use the rosin. So there should be rosin in this little part over there. And if there's not, you can use mine. And all this does is this provides like a stickiness to the bow hairs so that it's easier to make the string vibrate. So it kind of pulls on it a little more. And you just want to rub it up and down. And some people will like take a key and like scratch at the surface of the rosin to get the stickiness to come out quicker. But I don't know, I haven't done that. So So just a few swipes will do the trick. And then you can put her back. Okay, so now I want you to put your instrument on your lap. Just rest it on your knees so that it won't fall. And then we're just going to work with the bow. So I want you to find what's called the balance point of the bow. And to do this, you put the bow on one finger. And if it goes this way, you want to move it up just a little bit and just kind of play with it. And once you find the balance point, it should balance just on one finger. Yeah, you bet. So now, remember that spot? And just kind of turn the bow in on your finger. And what we're gonna do is grab it with your thumb, yep. And then make sort of a llama. Yeah. So then your llama wants to eat the bow. And usually we go, because <laughs> sound effects are fun. So then your llama has eaten the bow, and it's okay. It's all right. Not tasty, but not too bad. So then they do, you just want to rest, rest a, I don't know, a tooth or maybe an ear on the bow so that it's curved like that, and then rest the pinky on the other side. So... Your llama has eaten quite a bit of your bow, and that's something that you always have to remember because it's very easy to have it come out like that, but you want it, the bow to be in your like second knuckle there, and that allows your pinky to rest easier. And then, the, okay, the hard part about the bow is that you don't want your thumb to straighten out. I know, it's really, really hard. So, what helps is to kind of tilt your thumb, if you can see, so that it's not like that, but it's kind of on a, like resting between your nail, and, like the pad of your thumb, mm -hmm. and you just want to curve it like that. But it's really hard to get it first. So then just practice going like this, just to get the motion. You want a fluid motion between your wrists, so that it's not like <laughs> not you're not sawing. You're just kind of lightly lightly going. So then, let's put our instruments up. Curve your thumb. Put your instruments up. And then you can just hold it by the shoulder again, because we're not going to use the right hand yet. So then, just place it on any string and try it. using the bow is that you don't want to get too close to the bridge because otherwise it sounds kind of funky and like some music does use this because it sounds kind of eerie and kind of scourgey but we don't use that in traditional stuff by like Mozart or mm -hmm. whoever and you don't want to go too close to the fingerboard either because then you get the oils and it still doesn't sound very good but there is time and place for that we're just not going to it. So you want to find a really good contact point 
which is where the bow meets the string. And you want to stay in the middle of, the, of this area. And something else that I never realized about bowing is that you need a lot of weight in your hand, otherwise it's going to sound really thin. And that's not what you want. So you can really put a lot of weight on there and just kind of go at it. Because that's how you're going to get a full resonant sound. So don't be shy. Yep. Okay. Remember your thumb? You're straightening. <laughs> you can put, you can rest it on your rest it on your leg and reform because it's really hard to keep it curved yeah yeah you got it okay so now we're gonna play ants with the bow okay so we're just gonna do quarter notes each 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 and every switch 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 and we're gonna start with a down bow because that's what you normally do unless it's marked otherwise with an up bow so you usually start with a down bow and then go up so that it alternates and you want to have the same amount of down bows and up bows in the same measure so that you don't get confused but we're not even gonna it doesn't matter for what song we're gonna play so we're just gonna do four quarter notes on each string and that'll be our ants ready I'm gonna start one two ready each, each and every ant to make it make it sound yeah it's wild yeah yeah okay so now now that we've played our played our pieces it's time to loosen our bows and this is something you can put your instrument in your back in your case or just rest it on your lap if you want it's up to you okay can i just like uh-huh uh-huh so now we want to loosen our bows at the end of every time we play because the bow can be affected by a lot of elements that like brass really can't be. So like if it's too cold and then you immediately go to a, somewhere that's kind of warm, the bows or the bow hair can snap or be damaged. And that's not something we want. And if there's too much tension for too long, that's also bad, because then when you loosen it or tighten it again, it messes with the temperament and the longevity of the bow. So now you can take off your your shoulder pad. Yep, place that down. Put it back in its case. And this is the nice thing about string instruments is that you don't really have to take anything apart like you do with woodwind instruments. I don't know. We both play brass, though. And then zip it up.